So today here in this uh, session one, we have with us Professor Juan Bisquetch from the Institute of Advanced Materials and University of uh, Castello, Spain, and he will be delivering his plenary talk to us. So Professor Juan is a professor of uh, applied physics at uh, the universities of uh, Castello, Spain, and uh, he's also the director of Institute of Advanced Materials, and he develops various research on materials, nanostructures, and various devices for the productions and also for the efficient of the clean energies. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much for the presentation. Very happy to, to speak here. Today I will start with a general introduction to, to solar energy conversion. So this is the contents of uh, <clears throat> my new book that has been just published. This is the Physics of Solar Energy Conversion by CRC Press. And in the book we have um, described the principles of several fields related to clean energy production and advanced materials like uh, photovoltaics, the solar fuel production, also energy storage in, in batteries and, and also lighting. So this is a book about energy materials and interfaces for making devices and understanding the principles. So I want to, to explain how, how this uh, book began. Uh, so basically, uh, since 1950s, we had the, the solar energy conversion by silicon photovoltaics. And uh, the dominant way to understand this uh, has been uh, physics oriented, because um, you have the production of carriers, and then you have like drift diffusion equations. So the production of photovoltaic action was very much based on the a semiconductor transport equations because uh, this is uh, just a homogeneous piece of materials with electrons and holes move so this is the natural way to to understand it but in the uh, final years of the 20th century there appear different concepts for making uh, photovoltaic devices like uh, sensitized cells is based on uh, nanostructure that can transport the carriers in a liquid medium and you have uh, dyes to capture the light. So there is a process of injection to this uh, semiconductor and then uh, you decouple a single material into a mixture of materials. So this is uh, in principle quite different from the uh, homogeneous semiconductor. And uh, based on this concept, you can make solar cells with organic materials, and in particular, you can make like these multicolored solar cells. So this is the dye sensitized solar cell, mainly the work of Michael Gratzel and then many others, and it was developed, well developed until 2010. So this is the first concept. And another concept is the uh, fully organic solar cell. So in this case, this is a blend of organic materials that are el electron uh, and hole conductors. So here you have also excitation and charge separation, and you have a transport in uh, an heterogeneous non-structured material. Another interesting concept is the quantum dot sensitized solar cell. So this is similar to the dye sensitized solar cell but uses an inorganic semiconductor, usually a quantum dot, <coughs> for uh, uh, the absorption and injection of carriers. So then, uh, these things were developing, and, and some have continued, other not, so now the, the organic solar cell now is, is very high efficiency and robust, but uh, in 2010 appeared a derivation of the sensitized quantum dot sensitized solar cell appeared by the work of uh, Professor Tom Miyazaka in Japan and it was uh, covering the nanostructure with uh, metallolite perovskites. So uh, this perovskite is a combination of, of several material 
and then you can you can make also thin film solar cells by uh, solution process method so in principle this is this is quite cheap and uh, then there was an evolution from the from the uh, nanostructure semiconductor to a full thin film of perovskite because the use of the nanostructure here was more like a kind of contact. So already in 2013, there was a very high efficiency of 15% after just a few years of discovery. And then this started going up. So this is the general table of efficiencies of photovoltaics. And this started going up and it has reached now 25% efficiency which is uh, very high for uh, a solution process solar cell. So here it is more detailed and you can compare the fast rise of efficiencies of perovskite, which is now around here, uh, compared to the historical evolution of other photovoltaic technologies. Uh, and this was also by changing, gaining, increasing technical and fundamental knowledge about the preparation of the so over in summary over the last uh, 30 years there has been <clears throat> a lot of novelty in photovoltaic materials and uh, this uh, uh, combination of methods techniques different materials interface and structure requires a new understanding of the uh, photovoltaic uh, materials and this is the basic concept in which you have an excitation of a semiconductor and then it's going into other or the same materials but then we need some principles that describe the diacetyl solar cell and a thick semiconductor like the perovskite solar cell or the silicon solar cell with the same concepts so this uh, was developed over uh, many years and the main concept is that uh, when you have a semiconductor you have uh, carriers in two different states and they are in basically in equilibrium with the surrounding radiation and then <clears throat> when you uh, produce light you have an increase of pumping to the high energy state and then an increase of recombination which is falling down from the high energy state to the holes here so you create carriers by photocitation you lose them by recombination with this process you create more carriers in the upper state and you create a separation of the chemical potential and this is an internal photovoltaic but not an electrical voltage that you can measure to obtain a voltage you have to supplement the solar cell with a additional parts which are the selective contacts so the selective contact is one material that will take one type of carrier only so that here you get an equilibration to the chemical potential or fermi level of electrons and at the other side you get equilibration to the fermi level or chemical potential of the other carrier the holes that are at the lower state so that now you can really obtain a voltage uh, from the solar cell and you have a complete solar cell this concept has also been uh, very clear in silicon and other type of uh, solar cells. For example, in the book of Peter Borfeld, he, he describes the, the same concept. Uh, but it was then generalized to all the new types like the diensensitized, quantum dot, perovskite. And uh, so the image that we have is that you have a semiconductor with selective contacts and have like three steps one is light absorption pumping up then you create an electron hole pair and this must be separated otherwise it goes generate recombination and finally you need extraction and when you have extraction you create current electrical current you create photocurrent so uh, another way to see it is that you have regeneration competing uh, recombination and extraction so you have these three main processes to count in the balance of carriers and of course you are interested in carriers going out because the carriers 
recombinated inside don't give you any electrical work. So this is a loss, and this is the, the main process to control is to diminish the loss and uh, send out as many carriers, and of course absorb also uh, as much light as possible. So from the picture of the selective contacts, you can see the process of creation of photovoltaic because the internal state of the semiconductor is taken by the contacts and then you can have uh, you can have uh, photovoltaic. This is a very simple model with several assumptions, which is nice for getting an idea of how the solar cell works. But of course, you see the framing levels are straight. Uh, the, the extraction is very fast. You have some assumptions, uh, this of course can be can be improved by using transport equations to make a more realistic model if the solar cell is very sick, which is when you will have gradients, etc. But for starting, this model is very nice because now you have to consider also a balance of lights because you are you are having the, the illumination pumping carriers upwards and you are having the recombination. And when the recombination is radiative, it will produce emitted light. So this is an important concept in which not only you see the electrical flow, but also the flow of photons coming in and going out in order to control the operation of the solar cell. The other point is that in the solar cell, you can control the voltage externally. You can modify it. So when you control the voltage, you can control the internal recombination. So you can control how much current is going out or coming in. And from this, you can make a balance of all the currents going on in the solar cell. So because you are, you are in the dark, you have the external current, the recombination current, and the initial generation current. And when you put light, you have more photogeneration. So you write a balance of these currents, and from this, you obtain the fundamental diode equation, uh, which is just a balance equation of a solar cell with selective contact, contact. So you don't need any transport equation to write a diode equation. And this is a nice explanation of the origin of the solar cell as a diode that is illuminated. So when you modify the internal voltage, you can move and change the external current and obtain JD curve uh, very easily from this simple model. We can go further and consider the balance of illuminations, and you can do here some fundamental considerations about the equilibrium of the radiation coming in and going out. So for example, you can get uh, a fundamental recombination constant for reactive recombination. And uh, <clears throat> from these concepts, you can make a general analysis of the possible efficiency of a solar cell. And this is called the soil kaiser efficiency limit. So then uh, in this uh, method, you describe the solar cell, as I just said, a semiconductor with 70 contacts. Uh, it interacts with light and the absorber is a material with a sharp manga. And then you assume that there is the tight balance of light coming in and going out with only radiative emission. Just by using these ingredients, you can obtain a fundamental uh, uh, limitation to the efficiency by taking into account the different losses of the physical effects of this model of the solar cell, you can obtain the possible power in function of the band gap of the material, which is maximum around here, 1.5 uh, electron volts. Uh, in summary, there has been a lot of uh, changes, generalization, and interest in the photovoltaic uh, materials over the last 30 years. So then I decided to, to summarize the situation in a series of books. The first one was about equilibrium concepts and kinetics for nanostructured energy devices, the second about carrier transport, and the sense about the photovoltaic principles. And <clears throat> Then, after the collection was complete, uh, this has been now combined into a single volume, which is the physics of solar energy conversion. 
and uh, uh, this now makes this broad view for a range of materials uh, about the principles and applications of solar energy conversion and uh, it covers the discovery of perovskite solar cells also the organic solar cells and also uh, energy storage and uh, hydrogen production for for water splitting so now the book is is published and available if you are interested in understanding this this type of scientific field